fears are a weird thing. Some fears keep us safe, like the fear of fire. Some fears drive us to be a better version of ourselves, like a fear of falling behind. And some fears are just plain nonsense, like the fear of dead bodies or when your horse won't walk by the tarp that's literally been against the barn for three years. But anyway, a lot of fears seem, well, less scary when you know other people share them with you. For my kind of people, there's one fear above the rest, the C word. Horse people dread having to think about Kala. Hello, I'm Michelle Schroeder, a six-year 4 h from Niagara County, New York, and today I will be talking about colic to, in hopes of making it seem less nightmarish. Today I'm going to tell you what colic is, where colic happens, some of the different types of colic, and how you can prevent, recognize, and treat colic, and of course, where to learn more. The technical definition of colic is an acute attack of abdominal pain localized in a hollow organ caused by spasm, twisting, or obstruction. But what you're thinking of as colic and what an animal person knows colic to be are probably two different things. A lot of people are more familiar with colic in newborn baby humans where an infant will cry and be grassy, but really, colic is just any abdominal pain at all. And unfortunately, 152,000 to 380,000 horses in America alone will face this pain this year. Their pains will range from anything from being a bit gassy even to something stuck in their digestive tract, or their organs even being twisted up. And unfortunately, they might die. Colic is fatal and is considered the number one killer of horses. To better understand colic, it's helpful to know where it happens. This is the equine digestion system. Since I know for some people it is a bit confusing to look at, because horses are horizontal in 3D, and this is literally just 2D, I made a 3D model to help. Digestion starts with the eyes. When the eyes see food, they start to create saliva. Saliva breaks food down chemically in the mouth. The mouth also has teeth which chew the food. Then, after it's chewed, food moves through the esophagus, which is about four and a half to five feet long in the horse. Keep in mind that these lengths I'm giving you are based on the average 1,000 pound horse. Then food goes to the stomach. The stomach and the esophagus are connected by a ring of muscles called the cardiac sphincter. It's important to be familiar with the cardiac sphincter because horses have the toughest cardiac sphincter of all mammals. So although food comes in, food cannot come out, making colic and choke very scary. After the stomach, food moves to the small intestines, which don't be fooled by its name. The small intestines is actually 70 feet long, but it's thinner and takes up a lesser volume than the large intestines, so hence the name small intestines. The small intestines is so big, so it would make sense for it to be bound together. But guess what? It's actually not. The small intestines is in no way attached to itself, so it literally is 70 feet of loose hose. Then food moves to the cecum. The horse's cecum is about 4 feet long. Humans do have a cecum, but a human cecum is often thought of as just another part of the large intestines. Horses eat more rough forages than us, so they need a larger cecum that can perform a bigger job. After the cecum, Food moves to the large intestines, which again is actually shorter than the small intestines. See this S shape? That's the only place where the digestive tract is actually connected to itself at all. So that's where the most impactions happen. We'll get into that later. Then, food moves to the colon, which is about 10 feet long, and meets its end at the rectum, which is about a foot long. Now that we're familiar with col where colic happens, let's talk about some of the different types of colic. Please note that um, colic can be caused by such a big number of things that it's not always going to look the same in every horse. And oftentimes, different types of colic are seen with other types of colics, so you should never make assumptions or ignore anything. Our most common type of colic is gas colic. Gas colic is just due to any gas buildup in the abdomen. Because of this, your horse will have flatulence, their abdomen will descend due to gas, and they will show signs of pain. But because of some, the simplicity, of this just being caused by gas buildup, this is the most common colic to see with other type of colics, so don't ignore it. Our next fairly common and easy to treat colic is spasmatic colic. Spasmatic colic is due to muscle spasm and contraptions, similar to those of being in labor. It's fairly easy to treat because it's comparable to indigestion in people. And it can be triggered by excitement, especially in younger horses. The next type of colic is where things start to get a little bit more serious. Impactful colic, as the name suggests, 
is when anything foreign gets in the digestive tract and causes a blockage. This can range from anything the horse accidentally eats, like fragments of baleen twine or fur, and can even be caused by larger parasites, like roundworms. The symptoms aren't always immediately present when you're dealing with impaction cows, because it's kind of like a traffic jam in the digestive system. Let me demonstrate that. This big clear tube represents your digestive tract. Both liquid, this is just water, and solid, this is just rice, by the way, pass through fairly easy, but then something impacts it. In both solid and liquid, struggle to pass through. Yes, a few drops did slide by, but keep in mind that the impaction will keep getting larger in size, and this is a hard tube. The actual digestive tract is fleshy, so it will start to conform to the shape of the impaction, similar to those old like Mickey Mouse cartoons where somebody falls through the drain and you can see them sliding through all the pipes. Technically, this nest type of colic is just another impaction colic, but it accounts for a most number of cases that we can think of it as its own type of colic. Sand colic is more common in the um, southern states of America where their soil is actually sandier than ours, but it can happen in New York too, especially if you feed your horse in an arena. Feeding in an arena puts your horse at risk for getting an impaction due to sand. You may have heard that you should never let a colic an animal roll. These next two types of colic are why. A horse in abdominal pain will often roll as their last ditch attempt to try to get rid of that pain. But the digestive tract is 100 feet long all loose, so it can unfortunately get displaced. Displacement colic is just when any part of the digestive tract is, where, not where it should be. Similar to displacement colic, and the fact that it can happen due to rolling, is twisted gut colic. It usually happens in small intestines, which is our 70 feet of loose hose, but it can help happen elsewhere. Unfortunately, this colic can be life-threatening, because in rare occasions, um, strangulation of the digestive system will occur. And I don't know about you, but I think blood flow is pretty important, and so does your horse. Let me demonstrate this type of colic as well. This thinner tube represents your digestive tract now. If you notice, both liquid and solid can pass through. Now, it doesn't slide through as easily as it did in the big flu tube, but if I blow in it, it goes right through. But this is because this tube is just a tube, and the actual small intestines is lined with tons of muscles to push it through. Then it starts to get twisted. And suddenly both liquid and solid struggle to pass through, no matter how hard the muscles work or eye blood. Since we know about the different types of colic, what does it look like? Well, colic, although it's a symptom in itself, is usually diagnosed by symptoms. Your horse will show signs of pain, like pawing at the abdomen, staring at the abdomen, rolling, not wanting to eat, and just not seeming like themselves. So it's important that you know what are normals for your horse. Their vital signs may also be irregular. So you not only should know the range of vital signs for equines, but the range of vital signs for your particular animal. For example, if my horse was acting lethargic, and I took his temperature, and that was at 101 degrees Fahrenheit, this isn't per se a fever because it's not above 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit, but if I know that his temperature is more like 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm not going to ignore it. Further tests can be done by your vet like ultrasounds or other imaging like scoping, but this really is a decision that your vet needs to make for you. Treatment can vary. Sometimes just walking a gas palicky horse around does help a lot, but unfortunately with impaction or twisted gut colic, Sometimes you're looking at very expensive colic surgery, although your vet will always try to do everything else first not to have to operate. And please, if your horse has any reason ever to worry you, just ask your vet. Since colic is so scary, it would be nice if we can just completely for prevent it. Well, unfortunately we can't. Colic is, can really happen to any horse at any age, any level of fitness, and even to the most important and careful owners, so it's important that we just try best to prepare for it. We need to clean vigilantly and feed vigilantly. This includes checking your hay for foreign objects, making slow 
changes to your animal's diet, and always cleaning up after yourself at the barn, especially when you brush during shedding season. You should also deworm and vaccinate your horse. One of the reasons for this in relation to colic is that many internal parasites cause discomfort in the abdomen. This technically is colic, but larger parasites like groundworms can even cause impactions. Vaccination is important because colic is a symptom of a number of other diseases. So if you lessen the chance of your horse getting those diseases, you lessen the chance of your fur baby getting colic at all. And if your horse is colicking and you know they're vaccinated, you won't have to worry about a few diseases that can be seen with colic. You should have an equine first aid kit. This goes without saying that if you have any animal, you need to have an appropriate first aid kit. But in a colic situation, there's a few things that might be extra helpful. One is a thermometer. As soon as you call your emergency vet, they're going to ask you for your horse's vital signs. So you want to have a thermometer that you can use. You also might want to have some tums. Tums for humans are safe for horse, but never assume any other human medications are safe for animals. This can help in spasmatic and gas colicky situations, but you should never medicate your colicking horse without first asking your vet. Because pain medications can make colic worse and it can actually mask symptoms, so making a diagnosis harder. Have a plan in case the unfortunate happens and you do need to get your horse hospitalized for colic. Most equine hospitals are like four hours away, so you need to know that if your horse colics at the crack of dawn, you have a truck and trailer and somebody able to drive you there. And you also need to know that in your absence, somebody can be ready at Mimit's modus to take care of the rest of your herd. Financially, unfortunately, colic treatments can get very expensive. So there are a few different equine health insurance and colic insurances on the market you can look into. And, you, and just financially planning, like having an emergency savings fund with your bank, like you might have for your own family, is helpful too. Have a connection with your vet. If your horse is colicking, that, that's not when you want to be like, hey vet, I'm pretty sure Lily's pregnant and Blaze has heat. Oh, do you know me? My name is Michelle. Your vet's not going to appreciate that. Your horse isn't going to get any better, and that's not going to help you. So please, get to know your vet before the unfortunate happens. And of course, learn for yourself. Even if you're not a horse person, all these suggestions I've given you are pretty helpful in other scary situations, especially if you take time to gain knowledge. Knowledge is often your best tool in any situation, and you want to you wanna kind of go in, into a colicky situation with preparedness because a nervous horse and a nervous handler don't mix well. There are tons of people in the animal industry willing to help you te and teach you and find great resources. Today I talked about the complexity of the digestive tract, which is what makes it so fun to learn about. It's also what makes it so sensitive and prone to colic, so you need to look after it as such. Colic can come up in your horse's life in a variety of different ways. It doesn't look the same every time. It can be seen with so many other problems that you should never ignore it or jump to the conclusion. Preparation is key, so always expect the unexpected. Never medicate a colicky horse. Please don't let your colicking horse grow. And when in doubt, ask your vet. I said you can learn more. Here are some of the resources I found helpful. I wish I could come up with the idea of the household item digestive tract, but I saw it used somewhere else. I really love the American Youth Horse Council. They have so many great publications, like Equine Science, which is one of my favorite books because it mentions everything about the horse, but it's just so simple and easy to remember. And Horse Smarts, which I really like to use with my 4-H club, because it's an interactive book with lots of fun learning activities. I also love Smart Pack Equine, which is a supplement and tack and apparel brand, but they also have a lot of great web-based knowledge resources, like their awesome YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching today. Even if you're not a horse person, I hope that some of these suggestions can help you in other situations in life. I really hope that nobody would ever have to face anything as scary as college. I hope you enjoyed. Are there any questions?